Do you know the feeling where you're looking for a file on your machine but you have no idea where it is? So you pop up some kind of a file explorer and then you try to search there. Maybe you don't remember the exact name and you're not sure where to look. So you pop up your terminal because you're a hacker and then you run find. Now you might be thinking to yourself, oh this dude doesn't know what he's talking about. I've got locate. Even if you do have locate, which is great to have by the way, and stick to the end of the video where I show you how to set up on different operating systems, you may not remember the exact name of the file. That that could produce a list of 50 or 100 different files. How do you know which one is the right one for you? Well, you're gonna have to view them one by one. That's kind of annoying and time consuming. There's one solution that does that great and integrates with all other tools. With over 55,000 stars on GitHub, FCF is the ultimate command line fuzzy finder. Say goodbye to endless scrolling and searching through files, folders, and command history. With FCF, simply type a few characters and watch the results magically appear. It's super fast and efficient, but most of all, it removes friction. FCF is a picker. If the result is not piped anywhere, it's echoed back into the terminal. Let's make it more interesting than that. With the preview flag, we can get a glimpse into the pick. In this case, since we're watching files, I'll use bat and add some color and lines to read the file conveniently. Moving around is generally done with the arrows. Mine are mapped to vmotions with control. The currently typed string always shows in green within the results to show why they were picked. So if you just want to randomly find files on your machine, just run this in your home directory and wait for the system to index the files. Now warning, this depends on the number of nested files under the home directory. Take this tip with a grain of salt. The lower the path in the tree you search, the quicker results will get indexed. Let's improve the process though. FZF is not only great with files, it's arguably better when put to command line daily use. When searching commands history, most users either just hit the up arrow again and again, others may watch the history to search with their eyes or print the list to grip from it. For more about grep, check the video up here. Some of you probably even know about Ctrl R, where you can search the history and move between results. This is, by the way, by far the best option on remote machines. With FZF, Control R is brought to a new level of usefulness. You get a fuzzy search of recent commands. You can simultaneously view recent, search, scroll, and hit the result to print it into your screen where it's ready to run. Another handy built-in binding is Control T, which essentially pastes selected files and directories into the command line. This is useful when scripting files or directory management. For example, a removal tool. This is also where FZF multi-select mode comes in. You can always trigger it yourself by adding the minus minus multi flag and then use tab or shift tab to select and deselect. The third binding that comes with FZF, one which I use daily, is the option C. This opens up a directory switch where you get a list of available directories and by hitting one of them, FCF will CD into that directory. This is a simple tool anyone can script in minutes, but it's built for the user's convenience, which I'm thankful for. It may seem obvious, but often open source authors tend to leave these edges for users' creativity and having such an amazing tool and getting such defaults is not taken for granted. Kudos to the author, which by the way, is a very productive coder, he is responsible for many Vim plugins and other tools, so check out his profile for more. FCF also has a configurable trigger for fuzzy completion. By default, it would be two stars and tab to trigger FCF. Useful combinations are killing processes with kill and minus nine for setting sig term to one of the processes FCF lists. Another one is exporting environment variables or unaliasing certain bindings found in the alias list. As with everything else, the trigger can be changed by simply overriding it with FCF completion trigger variable. Once the variable is reconfigured, it can be used for anything and any auto completion you've been using before. Speaking of triggers, this video is not sponsored by Zellige, but you may be triggered to give it a go once you hear these news. Zellige now has session resurrection capabilities, something that deterred many viewers of this channel in the past to take it on. If you upgrade Zellige to its latest version, launch a session, then quit your terminal, you can come back, get the running session list and see your old sessions still there where you can attach and run the same thing. By the way, you can now also rename sessions through the session manager. Kudos to Aram and the team for making this a reality. And thank you Zellige for sponsoring this channel with love. I'm usually running FCF inside a Git project where I tend to get a dump of all the .git objects which I'm clearly not interested in. Not only that, it slows down the indexing process, so let's get rid of it. FCF can integrate with other tooling for lots of purposes. One such option is changing the default command. For this purpose, I'm going to map it to AG, the silver searcher. More on that in a sec. 
Note that I'm flagging hidden files, .git directory, and having the result respect ignore files. And here's the result after the change, quicker and easier to read. Plus, I only have 33 files to choose from, as opposed to the 500 I had before filtering unwanted files. To prove that ignore files are in fact respected, here's a docker file I'm currently using. If I were to add it to my .git ignore file and save, fzf will now filter that out. This comes in handy when scripting around git repos, especially open source projects where ignored files should stay out of the release process. At least that's how I'm utilizing this feature. You can get creative with fzf and files. To read a file with cat or vim, add the dollar parenthesis notation for command substitution with fzf inside as an argument. This can be sent to any reader. You can switch things around by sending the output of a file to fzf and have it serve as a line picker. This is usually great when reading large text files like application logs, for example. Then fzf allows you to search the logs with ease. I can pipe the stream directly or read the file into fzf. Now fuzzy searching for the health issue I had is as simple as just typing it. In the wild, fzf is used in many open source tools. It comes with fzf tmux side script to open it within tmux panes, if that's your thing. It is mine, by the way, I'll leave a link above if you're interested in some tmux magic. Beyond that, fzf can be found in the DevOps toolbox in tools like kubectx and kubeNS. This basically takes a list of available Kubernetes clusters or their respective namespaces and using a fuzzy picker to change the correct context. This way, my local machine is configured to work against the picked one. It works similarly with namespaces. For the Kubernetes users here, this one is a game changer. You pick the namespace from a fuzzy search list using fzf and once you pick, it'll set itself in the context. You don't have to modify anything else. If you're a NeoVim user like me, you've probably noticed a huge inspiration for Telescope with fuzzy file searching or even live grepping. Now, speaking of live grepping, do you remember we used AG, the silver searcher earlier as an fzf command? Well, here it is doing its original thing, searching through code. Telescope is using a similar project called ripgrep, which is another code searching tool doing exactly the same. How does this help? Well, what if you can search through code, then pipe the results into your favorite fuzzy searching tool? Yes, you can get a code searching tool on your own, but let's improve it. What if I'd like every pick to open the file it belongs to? I can cut the result, grab the file name, isolate it, and then send it to NeoVim. When certain CLI tools can't take STD in, Xargs is a lifesaver. And here's the file in NeoVim ready to go. To be clear, libgrep and the silver searcher are interchangeable in this use case, and both work exactly the same for this purpose. So if you have a preference, please don't worry about it. I'll leave both links in the description below, but if you're really into squeezing every bit from your tools, Ripgrip shows slightly better results when compared to AG, but they're both quite similar and the difference is insignificant. Working with Kubernetes, here's an example for how FZF plays well with kubectl. Sometimes when not using certain TUIs, grabbing pod names and then describing them is not the most pleasant experience. I fixed this with a local tool, which basically does this. I grab a list of pods with kubectl get pods, pipe it into fcf, which in turn pipes the user pick into awk. Awk will take the first field, which is the pod's name, and using xargs it'll push the name for kubectl describe pod. All that's left is to pick a pod from the list. There's my description. I can do the same with reading logs just by piping the same to kubectl logs. The options here are pretty much endless. Having fzf in my tool belt is definitely a lifesaver. One last word about locate because I promise. Many systems come with locate hibernated in the background or uninstalled. In order for it to run properly, you'd want to activate it by creating a database and having locate index the files in the system. Don't worry, it's not as bad as it sounds. If you're on a Mac, you can just run locate. macOS will give you the commands required to initiate the database. If you're on Linux and the locate command is not installed, go ahead and install mlocate using your package manager, either yum, apt, or even apk for the alpine enthusiasts. Once done, run sudo update db so that locate will have data to work with. When that's done, run locate, file name, and enjoy the results. But we can't really handle raw text results, right? Pipe it to fzf, then ship the results to NeoVim for further exploration. So this is one tool that replaces a bunch of old ones while improving the process. But what if I told you there is a list of essential tooling that you can replace today to fix the issues you didn't even know you had? Well, check out this video right here to figure all about these. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.